Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We are in 2 Timothy chapter 2. We'll be starting verse 17 this lesson, but before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16. Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, as we saw last lesson in verse 16, because uh, verse 17 continues the thought from verse 16. He says here, But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. So Paul tells Timothy to turn your back, turn away from unholy, unsacred, empty conversations. Why? Because those kinds of conversations, those kinds of words will lead you down a road of more and more ever-increasing ungodliness. And your spiritual life will become more and more uh, destitute of God if you continue down that road. It will ever increase. And then he says in verse 17, and their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus. So he says here, their word, that means these empty, uh, unholy, unsacred words or conversations, their word will eat like a canker. Now, it says will eat. And this Greek word for will eat is nomain. And it means to have a place to pasture or to grow, or to increase. So their words will, in a sense, they will like letting cows out to pasture. They'll start grazing on the, on the field, right? So grazing on the grass. Well, their words will start grazing and eating, and they'll, it'll, it, they'll start to grow and increase inside your heart. And it says, as they will, uh, their word will eat like a canker. And a canker here is gangrena. That's the Greek word. And of course, that's where we get our English word gangrene. Now, their unholy, un their unholy and empty words will feed and they will pasture and grow, grow in your soul. This is why Paul tells Timothy, turn away from unholy speakings. Turn away from, from, from empty conversations, worthless, useless conversations. Because their words, those words will enter your soul. And like gangrene, it will start feeding on your soul. Because Christian doctrines are so inter, interconnected with each other, when a Christian is corrupt in one doctrine, for example, in the virgin birth, they will be corrupted in other doctrines also. For example, the hypostatic union or the deity of Christ. If you're, if you're corrupted in one doctrine, see, all the doctrines of the Bible are related to each other in some way. So when you're corrupted in one doctrine, like the virgin birth, that that doc, that corrupt doctrine will begin to, to like gangrene, will begin to eat out other doctrines like the virgin, like, like, like the hypostatic union that God came in the flesh, like the deity of Christ. Was Jesus really God or not? It'll start eating away. It eats like gangrene in their soul until all is corrupted. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. Listen, be careful. Be careful who you hear the word of God from. And always take time to pray and to study what you hear if you have any doubts or any questions. Always make sure you have, always make sure you have some strong Christian who's founded in the word of God that you can take questions to. When all else fails, I have I can go to this person and ask them a question because I trust I know them. They're they're strong in the word and they're strong in God. And I trust what they what they're going to tell me is true. And it's according to God's word and according to God's heart. 
So be careful when you hear the word of God on the radio, on the TV, whatever. You read it in a magazine or, or whatever. Be careful who you hear the word of God from. And always take time to pray. Take time to pray and to study what you hear. If you have any questions, well, I, this, this isn't, well, I heard that preacher on TV and it just didn't sound right. Well, you got to begin to study. Pray about it and study. Don't just receive it in as truth. And that's what a lot of people do. Well, he, he's been a preacher now for 35 years on the radio or on the TV. I guess everything he says has to be right. I mean, why would God allow him to be on the radio for 35 years if he wasn't right, right? <laughs> and, and so you automatically, you know, you receive things from people based upon them and not based upon the truth. Based upon their their history and not based upon the word of God. And you can't do that because because people can be led astray. You need to you need to be careful that that you if you have any questions or any doubts, you dive into the word of God and start studying it. And if you're not that well versed in studying, have a have a good Christian friend. Go to your pastor, go to your Bible study leader, whatever, and ask them this question. And, and, and say, look, this didn't sound so right, what, what this person said or what this person wrote. That, didn't, that doesn't seem right. Can you explain it to me? But we need that. You need that. That iron sharpens iron. And uh, you've got to have that. Otherwise, you start, start getting sucked into believing things that aren't true from the word of God that draws you away from the heart of God. And you begin to receive these false doctrines. You receive these, these bad teachings into your heart. And those bad teachings, trust me, trust me, they will start eating away like, like a canker, like gangrene. They're going to start eating away at other doctrines in your heart. So he says here, and their word will eat like a canker, like gangrene, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus. Now, Hymenaeus, this is the same Hymenaeus of 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 20. And it's very possible, very possible, that according to 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 20, that Hymenaeus did get saved. And then he fell into some bad teachings, which resulted in him teaching false doctrines and leading people astray from the truth. It happens all the time. Just because he he, he spoke, he spoke. Let's, let's turn to 1 uh, Timothy chapter 1 and verse 20. And he says here, Of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme, all right? So, Paul, here in 1 Timothy, delivers uh, Hymenaeus and Alexander unto Satan, all right? You may say, well, that, that doesn't sound like he's saved, but that's the reason why many people believe he was saved, because Paul delivered him unto Satan. Unto Satan. Now, if you, want, if you want a more fuller explanation of why Hymenaeus possibly was saved, then you need, listen, go, go to my teachings as I did all of 1 Timothy. Go to my teachings on 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 20. And it explains it all out. I, do, I don't want to reteach the whole, whole lesson again at this time, but it goes into, it goes far deeper into the subject of Hymenaeus and Alexander and delivering unto them unto Satan and why the possibility of Hymenaeus is very high that he got saved, that he was saved, and he himself got deceived by false doctrines, and then he started teaching these false doctrines that he received to other people, and it just it just started it started to infect other people with these false doctrines, and and, and it did bad things in the church. So Paul says, "I've delivered him and Alexander unto Satan." All right, for the uh, that they would be chastened by Satan. So you can go and listen to those teachings. First Timothy one verse twenty. 
and look for my teachings on Hymenaeus and, and Alexander and being delivered unto Satan. And then he says, so he says, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus. Now, Philetus is not mentioned anywhere else in the Bible. So therefore, we don't really know anything more about Philetus than what's written here. We don't know if he was saved, not saved. What We don't know anything about Philetus. This is the only time he's ever mentioned. Now, he says here in verse 18, who, who, meaning Hymenaeus and Philetus, who, concerning the truth, they have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and they overthrow the faith of some. Now, it says here, who, concerning the truth, they've erred. Erred means they've missed the mark. They've got it wrong somehow, all right? And then it says here, saying that the resurrection is past already. Now, there are a number of views as to what Paul is referring to concerning this statement that Hymenaeus and Philetus were saying that the resurrection has already passed. Is he talking about the rapture? Does he, does, is, is he talking about the rapture of the church? Or could he be uh, referring to one of the false views <clears throat> during the time that taught that the resurrection took place at the moment of baptism and the Christian entered into that new life here and now on earth? Is that what he's talking about? That, that the resurrection means that when a person is baptized, whether it's immersion, however, that they they go down in the water and they come up in newness. Is that what is that what they were teaching? Because that was a false view back then in Paul's time that that baptism was a was that coming up in newness of life. That was your resurrection, and now you live your new life here on earth. Not not talking about heaven. Another false view taught that resurrection was nothing more than a man or a woman. Uh, lived lived on through his child through their children. You're being resurrected through your children. Your life is continuing on through your children. But whatever whatever this false false teaching was concerning that the resurrection was past already, we don't really know. We don't know what it is because Paul doesn't describe it. Paul doesn't describe. The only thing we can do is, is uh, to go back to those that, that time period and to try to find out what were false views concerning the resurrection. That's all we can do is and, and there's books out where you can you can uh, commentators and people that have studied the Word of God and they've done their best to try to find out what this means. And uh, the, what the views of the people uh, were at that time. So, but really, Paul doesn't describe what the details of this of this false doctrine that the resurrection has passed already. So, it, all it is is just speculating. It possibly could be this, and it could possibly be this teaching, but we don't know. It doesn't really matter. Listen, it doesn't really matter what the false teaching was, what really matters, the, what really does matter is the result that it had on the hearers. And this is true with any teaching. So it doesn't matter. It, it, listen, don't bog yourself down trying to find out, well, I need to find out what that doctrine was, the, the, the doctrine of, of the resurrection being passed already. No. Don't, don't waste your time trying to find out what that specific doctrine was. You're going you're gonna to spend hours, you're going to waste hours of your life trying to find hours and days of your life trying to find out what that specific, and it's the, the important, th the most Im absolute important thing is, is that it's teaching, it's, it's teaching us what the result was of that teaching to the hearers. What's the result? It's not the teaching, the false teaching isn't the issue, but the result that the false teaching had on the people, that's the issue. That's the issue. All right?
And, and it's true with any teachings that we have today. There's, there's loads of false teachings in the world today. We need to know what's going on in our world today. Don't worry about false teachings that happened 2,000 years ago. Worry about the false teachings that are, that are circulating in the world today amongst Christianity, amongst churches. You need, we need to be grounded in, in the Word of God. We need to be, to, dis, to be discerning what false teachings are here today. Because if we're not, we're going to receive these false teachings. They're going to start eating our soul like a canker. And then we're going to be gone, just like Hymenaeus and Philetus, Hymenaeus and Alexander. We're going to be teaching false things to people, drawing their hearts away from God and infecting them with false teachings. And that false teaching is going to go in and be like gangrene and start eating their soul up also. All right, so we just need, remember, the, the issue is, is the effect of the false teaching on people. Be careful who you hear the word of God from. And if you have any questions, study and pray and, and or ask people, ask, ask good grounded Christians uh, questions on, on, on these, on any doubts you have. And, 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 and just trust God, trust God that he'll, that he'll guide you and trust the Holy Spirit. He'll guide you into all truth. All right. Until next lesson, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.